Good evening, it's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets end of day session for Thursday, 24th of November 2016. Okay, now let's uh, conclude here in terms of, uh, well, certainly coming to a conclusion in terms of this uh, Thanksgiving week. The markets certainly seem to be uh, in a snooze fest. US markets continue their potential push higher, short squeeze higher. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds on Friday. Okay, but for now, uh, let's see where the uh, the numbers let's look at the stats uh, let's see exactly where we finish so uh, let's bring up the stats for you first of all okay so uh asian market certainly negative overnight you had the shanghai more or less flat to negative hang seng negative although you did have the nikkei moving high on the back of usd jpy touching 113 which i'll come upon okay you us markets ready it's a snooze fest okay uh, in terms of the european session you have the FTSE up uh, 11 points although it was sub uh, 6800 uh, in, earlier on german dax at the um, up 26 points and the uh, french cac up about 13 points so again more of a snooze fest okay uh, in terms of uh, economic data to uh, focus on today again it was mixed you had the uh, german gdp number coming in weaker in the morning okay uh, you had um, the German IFO data coming in weaker as well. Okay, uh, you also had the uh, German consumer confidence number coming in slightly better than expected. Okay, in terms of the other European sectors, you had the France business climate slightly better than expected. Okay, and uh, you also have job seekers from France as well, slightly on the stronger side. But as we all know, the focus remains on the political uncertainty in Europe. Not only do we have the political uncertainty in Europe, but the ECB actually um, focused upon that. ECB says it can help the euro area if political shock waves unsettle the market. So basically, it will help. So it's, it's certainly warning everybody of the so-called political uncertainty that is going to come. Okay. So again, it certainly is concerning. Now, we also had an Institute for Fiscal Studies says British workers are facing dreadful prospect of more than a decade without real growth in their earnings and that certainly isn't good okay a turkish lira as well certainly hitting a potential uh, new low uh, certainly uh, even though the central bank hiked rates by 25 basis points today lira drops a record low so again emerging market concerns certainly coming to the surface again us dollar obviously potentially pushing higher especially with usd jpy at that level opec as well you have opec concerns whether or not we would agree and we don't agree and again uh, certainly a lot of uncertainty regarding that in the morning you had the Iranians and the Iraqis uh, certainly bickering with one another in terms of potential uh, oil, put, oil output cut. And then you had the Russians all, out, out, out of the equation. Then the Russians came back into the equation. And, and we don't know where we are. Okay, there's certainly three scenarios for the potential OPEC cut. So again, there's a Wall Street Journal article. Certainly go, uh, I have tweeted that. So certainly look at my Twitter account. Uh, if you look at the CFD's education account as well. And you'll see that there's potential three scenarios. The first one is the fact that the uh, the onus is on the non OPEC countries, okay, and there are certain um, holiday periods for uh, certain organized or certain OPEC and non OPEC countries, especially those that have been suffering suffering with regards to supply. So again, I think one of them is Nigeria, if I can recollect. Nigeria is one of them, okay. Let me just bring that up for you. This would be interesting. Let me just see if I can drag this across. Okay, here we go. So you have. Um, you have a, a uh, first scenario is Saudi uh, were to cut down on minus 400,000. Okay, total cut 867,000. And then you have the uh, the actual OPEC countries and others obviously cutting as well. Saudi Arabia convinces nine of the members to cut production by 4% against Libya, Nigeria, Iran, and Iraq to freeze production. So certain cuts and certain freezes. Okay, Libya, Nigeria exemption, given the fact that they've obviously been hurt in terms of their disruption in supply. Okay, and then the third equation is that the Saudis certainly uh, do all the heavy lifting and it's very hard to see that uh, unfolding so again like i said folks certainly um, a lot of uncertainty regarding that and even if there is i think there's a report out the maximum oil prices can currently go is up to 50 dollars we're currently already at 47 so i think the, ma the maximum upside really is already baked into the cake okay so again it'll be interesting to see exactly how that unfolds as well okay now we have had an article with regards to the ecb um, jens weedman sees risks and ultra expansive monetary policy uh, Weedman wants gradual phase out of ECB bond buying, so anti QE rhetoric as well, which should actually force the euro higher too. So, what can we say? There's anti QE comments, there's political uncertainty, you have US markets certainly topping out as well. Uh, what more can we say? Okay, there's, right now there's another earthquake coast of Central America, 
So again, uh, all, uh, certainly bearish, okay? So all these factors certainly indicate bearish from my understanding, okay? Certainly looking at bearish price. Now let's go look, look, let's look at the actual technical picture. Now the daily chart of the German DAX remains bearish, stuck at that resistance at 10,800. Going over to the 60 minute chart, you have this HNS formation, which I've been waiting for to, to play out all day. Certainly looking for this German DAX to play out, especially a weaker GDP, okay? And also IFO data as well on the weaker side, political uncertainty, and now we've got anti-QE rhetoric. So, again, a lot of factors there to uh, indicate for the price to move lower. Consolidating gear on the side, just consolidating sideways thus far. Now, looking at the French CAC, folks, uh, the daily chart, the French CAC at the moment, again, remains bearish. It's just an inside bar consolidation. Looking for the next move lower, 60-minute chart, H&S formation, we've got a lower high, and now we're looking to potentially move south. 10-minute chart on the French CAC, again, you are looking at resistance here. So multiple zones of resistance, okay? So again, looking for a lower high, looking to test that 4, 5, 10, and potentially break lower. Looking at the FTSE 100 daily chart, still remains bearish with that topping tail put in yesterday, given the fact that the um, budget certainly failed to live up to expectations, okay? Uh, and again, the FTSE 100 being hurt by uh, hard Brexit talk, etc. You have the TPP, uh, again, deal potentially uh, coming to an end. You have US dollars certainly pushing higher, oil prices potentially topping out. It, it certainly isn't, uh, from my understanding, I can't see any uh, really a bullish argument. The only bully, a bullish argument that I've heard so far is that the markets, there's light volume in the market and we're going to go higher. It's not much of a technical or fundamental argument really, is it, folks? Okay, nor is it an intermarket analysis argument. And that's not what I trade on. Yes, fine, if the markets are going to, going to flow up, that's fine. But you must adhere to your trading strategy. You can't just presume the markets are going to flow up and move higher. That's not a trading strategy, folks, and that's not something that I subscribe to. Again, you have to be rigorous uh, and um, disciplined to, to stick to your trading strategy. Again, looking at the uh, h &S formation on the euro stocks, you've got a lower high, looking for a lower low. Again, political uncertainty in France and Italy. Okay, looking for a move lower. You've got daily bar. Uh, you can see consolidation inside the red candle. Everything's consolidating in the red candle and now looking to potentially move lower. 10 minute chart let's just bring this up for you 10 minute chart now folks okay okay so you certainly have uh, resistance here at uh, 3050 you have resistance here at 3045 so again looking for a flush and a move lower looking down a move down to 3015 potentially at 3005 so again looking for weakness especially with this political uncertainty that we have so bias certainly remains bearish from my understanding and my perspective okay we also had this and crop as well today uh, um, certainly weaker earnings too in terms of this and crop you can see here profit falls uh, as still struggle so again bias bearish okay so uh, multiple arguments from my perspective certainly looking to move lower oil topping out copper topping out uh, aussie kiwi certainly remains bearish dollar strength rate hikes certainly galore we had fed minutes yesterday as well certainly very hawkish so everything is indicating for a move low okay that's my conclusion on that note please do visit cfds.com for your trading needs and also visit trade signaler for signals and market updates from leading providers at google play and the apple app store goodbye now folks